Hey guys, Caroline here. This video is the sixth in my series of value betting and in this one I'm going to sort of leave behind the theoretical stuff now and start talking about the nitty gritty on how to actually find these value bets. So there's three methods that I'm going to talk about in this video. The first one is following tipsters. The second one is using software to help you identify value. And the third one is doing your own research and finding out your own sort of value calculation. So I'm going to go through these one by one. So following tipsters is how I started. And I think this is the easiest way to get started. So if you're not familiar, a tipster is someone who has some kind of expert knowledge on a particular sport or a niche within that sport. They've done the analysis, they've done the research, uh, you know, they've put in the time basically, and they come up with a set of tips which you copy and they charge a, a fee for this usually. There are some free tipsters, uh, but that is something which I don't recommend, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Now, Back in the bad old days, you know, years ago, tipsters have been around since, you know, betting has always been around. And there have been an awful lot of scams. People that would just release bullshit tips, they'll just make up the results and just lie. These days, it's a lot easier to find good quality tipsters. Tipsters, they have to be able to show their past results if you're going to follow them. You know, you never just blindly follow a tipster based on a good looking website, for example. You want to be able to see their past results and analyze them before committing your money. And these days we have something called independent proofing, which is something I'll talk about in later videos, where their results have been um, verified by an independent third party to, to verify that they're actually accurate. Now, one downside with tipsters is that the subscription fees can be high because each tipster charges their own uh, fee. So, for example, I follow quite a few and I have to pay a fee for every single one. And, of course, those subscription fees have, have to come out of the profits. So, in some cases, some tipsters have very expensive fees and they're only worth following if you've got quite a lot of money to play with, if you've got a large sort of bankroll. But then, again, this is something that I'll talk about more in later videos. Now, one big downside with tipsters, and it's something that I'll be talking about throughout this video as well, is that if you're following a particular popular tipster, the odds can crash, meaning they, they come down, they lower quite quickly after the tip is released. And that means that the value is gone. Now, this is the reason why I never recommend following a free tipster, because if a tipster is free, you can be bet that there'll be thousands of mug punters which are following it. Now, I have heard of cases where there are some tipsters that are so well known for releasing good tips that the bookies themselves follow them. And the moment that tip is released, they slash their prices regardless of how many other people are trying to bet on it, because then they know that the value they had was too high. And so what happens is the tip gets released at a certain price. You go to the bookmaker to try and place that bet and you'll find that the price has dropped significantly. And that, and if you continue to place that bet, as many mug punters will, that is causing that price to continue to get lower and lower, chasing the price down, as I talked about in a previous video. That will simply kill all the value. And this can be a real problem with very popular tipsters. And so I always recommend trying to find tipsters that aren't so popular, that aren't followed in you know, by as many people. And another downside with following tipsters is that you are putting your faith in that person. You know, he is a human, he or she is a human being, um, and they're, you know, subject to human error. You know, if I've had tipsters before that have suddenly changed tactics partway through and you think, what's going on? Suddenly all the bets change, the way they do things change. And then if they do that, that means that their past results are no longer valid because now they're trying something new. Um, if a person gets sick or if they perhaps simply lose interest in what they're doing or they simply close up their service, which happens. You know, I've been doing research on this for a long time now and I found um, tipsters that have been running well for years and then their performance tanks after a few years and they just simply stop running. So these are all things which you have to look out for when following tipsters. 
So the second method is using software. Now this is something that he's, uh, has come about more recently since computers and data have become more available. You know, back in the 80s, 90s, before computers were really, pop uh, really popular, this wasn't something that was available to every household. Whereas now you can simply go online and find software programs that are going to analyze huge amounts of data. Um, I mean, for example, I use a couple. One of them is on horse racing. Another one is on football. And the football one, for example, goes through 10 years worth of data on over 60 leagues to kind of analyze all of the prices which were available. And it come up, comes up with uh, prices which it believes are value um, bets. And it allows you to sort of interrogate that database. So depending on the sport, you might find that there is just one single angle. You might find these many angles. So, for example, my horse racing software that I use, it simply has one style of bet, which is the win single. So that means it looks for horses which um, have a value price on winning the race. And that's it. That's all it does. Whereas my football software that I use, it has many different types of markets and there's several ways of interrogating that database to come up with uh, a profitable angle. Now, one of the disadvantages is that you still have to do your own testing because you're going to be using that software in possibly a subtly different way to somebody else. I mean, for example, on the, the horse racing software, you can get all sorts of different odds ranges. Um, you can bet at different times. Um, you can bet on one horse per race or several horses per race. You know, there are so many different ways of using the software. And I've been using it for months and months now. And I had to go through lots and lots of testing to find what I think is not only a profitable angle for me, but something that works with my own mindset and variance level, which are more things which I'll talk about in future videos. So that's a, a disadvantage. But you've got some advantages here. The, the main one is that you've got less chance of other people having the same bets as you. I mean, with um, either of these pieces of software, the times at which you use them is going to determine, you know, what comes up. So if if other people are using the same horse racing software as me, the chances of them coming up with the same set of horses in any given day as me is fairly minimal because it, they would need to be betting at the exact same time as me and coming up with the exact same odds ranges and so forth. And so, as I talked about in the previous video, when lots of people are jumping on the exact same bets, those prices are going to drop. So if you're betting on something that other people aren't, to, aren't really betting on, the chances of being able to keep that value price is high. Now, of course, you pay a subscription fee for the software, just like with tipsters, but you might find that you can get more bets out of this one thing. So in both of these cases, for me, the horse racing and the uh, football one, I'm able to get as many bets as I might find in, say, five different tipsters. And so even though the subscription fees are quite high, it works out as quite good value for money for me personally. So the last one then that I'm going to talk about on this video is coming up with your own method. So this is basically what the tipsters do. In order to do this successfully, you would need to be some kind of expert in the sport or a ideally a niche within that sport. Um, the more specialized you are, the better chance you have of finding value. Now, if you look back on my previous videos in this series, I talked about how bookies price things and what they do is they have, they have these people called odd compilers which look at a particular sport particular events within that sport and all the various markets within that event and they come up with what they think is the implied probability of any particular outcome within the event and then from that they determine the price so to use your own method you would have to do the same thing as these odds compilers and try to find cases where you believe that a particular outcome has a better probability of winning than the bookie suggests. In other words, the price which they give you is a fairer price than you think it should be. In other words, that price has value. So obviously, to do this requires an awful lot of time. And you need to have an interest in the sport, sort of. I've actually got 
a couple of methods which I'm testing myself and I don't actually have interest in the sports but I have interest in the stats of the sports so that's something I do enjoy doing so for my particular strategies I don't need to watch the sports but I do need to dig in to analysis with those stats so again with um, the software you have to do all of your own testing you know if you're coming up with a, a method from scratch you need to test it from scratch so with the kind of testing that I've done I've been able to paper trade which means that I write down the um, the bets that I put and then I check what happened at the end and I can see how much I would have won or lost so I'm not testing this with real money but of course this still takes an awful lot of time um, to be able to get a decent amount of data to come up with something that's profitable and of course you generally need to go through this several times you know trial and error I've been doing this now for gosh almost two years and I'm only starting to come up with a couple of methods that I think might be profitable they're still in testing so one advantage of this is, of course, no one else is going to come up with the same bets. If you have your own method, then no one else is going to come up with the same bets as you. So, again, you're finding value where no one else is. So hopefully you'll be able to you know, keep that value and not have the problem of prices crashing. And it's free in terms of money. You don't have to pay any subscription fees. Um, but, of course, you're paying with your time. So. I'll talk a little bit about what I do. So as I've alluded to, I do all three methods. So when I first started, I started with tipsters only. Um, and then as I went on, I started to discover software. I've used various different types of software. And at the moment, I have two, which I use. And then along the way, I started developing my own strategies. Now, when I say developing my own strategies, when I first started this, I came up with some very, very simplic, uh, simplistic strategies strategies which were terrible and they and I didn't even test them properly I just threw money at them I didn't do any paper trading I didn't do any real testing I just tested with live money and this is one of the ways in which I lost a lot of money now I'm a bit more intelligent about the way I go through things I know how to test properly how to analyze properly and now I've got a few strategies in development which I am testing hopefully the right way so I'm recording this in July of 2020 and at the current time of doing this uh, video I've got a portfolio of 15 uh, varied strategies in six different sports it is a combination of tipsters that I follow of strategies which I've pulled out of my betting software and of some strategies which I have developed myself which are in testing so I'll also talk a little bit about going forward. Some people think that betting is a case of simply finding a profitable angle and that's it. You're set for life. And what I have found is that this isn't the case at all. I'm constantly having to analyze the performance of each individual strategy. You know, I've seen some people that post, um, you know, betting diaries online and they post their profit and loss on a daily basis across everything they do. They do. And I see that as really quite pointless because how much you earn in a day, a week, even a month, it's not really an accurate way of monitoring it. You have to monitor each strategy and you have to do it over the long term. And as I alluded to, things don't stay around. Things change. So I'm also always on the look for new strategies and I'm constantly trying to learn as much as I can. Um, there's an awful lot of information out there and I use that to learn from. I try to learn from other people's mistakes. I try to learn about odds and variance and staking and betting banks and so forth and I've learned so much about this. Um, and these are the kinds of things that I'll be teaching going forward in this series. So hopefully you can learn from some of my mistakes that I've made. So what I've discovered is that the portfolio that I have is always evolving. It's never fixed. Now, again, I've, I've seen other people doing these betting diaries and they say, right, that's it. I'm happy with my portfolio. Now I'm leaving it. But then in a year's time, they find they have to change it. Well, of course they have. Nothing stays the same. So, you know, as I've talked about previously, this isn't an easy thing and it takes time even if all you do is follow tipsters it still takes time analyzing those tipsters you know really digging in to find the good ones and then continuing to monitor them and continuing to find new ones it takes time if you're someone that thinks that you can really make a good money with betting with just 10 minutes a day look elsewhere um, this is something which takes work now having said that I think it's possible to make a good amount of money 
considering the time spent I think this is something you can do with just a few hours a week and make uh, a good return on whatever capital you have to invest which is why I'm persisting with it but it is an ongoing endeavor now there's one thing that I'm just going to reiterate again at the end of this video I'm not going to be revealing my tips or my strategies anywhere in this series and the reason for that is as I talked about previously if lots of people are following the same bets the odds will crash if I tell you what bets I'm placing you're going to go and try and place the same bets the odds crash it is a losing situation for everyone so I've already I've already talked about this in the very first video and yet still in the comments are people saying what are you betting on don't ask me that question I'm not going to answer it I never will the purpose of this series is to teach you about value betting to teach you how to find value bets yourself to teach you how to do the research to teach you everything you need to know to be a successful value better I'm not going to try and be a tipster or if I am one day going to be a tipster then I would do it properly by being a tipster I'm not going to be doing that in this value in, in this value betting series so is probably something that I'm going to have to keep reiterating because people always want the quick fix okay and that's that's not what this series is about so going forward um, in the series then I'm going to start with tipsters so in this video I talked about number one following tipsters number two software and number three developing your own uh, systems so I'll be starting with tipsters talking about where to find the tipsters how to analyze them and I'm going to be talking about things like betting banks staking plans variants and these are all very very important things to know before you start throwing your money at any tipster okay so I hope you found this one uh, useful and thank you very much for watching